Hello everyone, welcome back again to Witch in the Woods. It is, of course, Halloween, so I'm a little bit dressed up. Um, moved my chair over, because, yeah. Uh, and you'll notice I'm not wearing all of my stuff. I've actually been really working on the enchantments. So let's see, we have Flim Flam 4 on everything, we have Protection 4 on everything. Uh, if I get a better hat, like maybe Baba Yaga's, maybe I can borrow her, I'll, uh, strip the enchants from this and say, him to go grab that. I also have Last Stand 2. Now, uh, I only have that on three out of four of these, but anyways, Last Stand 2 uses when you would otherwise, like, take enough damage to die, um, it takes levels instead, uh, per point of damage, I think it is. So, consequently, Last Stand 2 takes the minimum of one per point of damage. So, if I get a whole ton of levels, I am again even more invincible. Because, again, my armor can't break. Uh, let me see, what else is going on? Our Mandrake is going quite nicely. 800 there. We still need to work on Spanish Moss. That is on our list of things to do today. Uh, but first, I'm just going to stop by the Auto Anvil and get uh, the Unbreaking on a couple more pieces. So, let's see, let's go with the Necromancer robes. Unbreaking... Not, strictly speaking, vital for our affairs, but, you know, it's something. So we're going to make a start on Mind Cam today. Uh, so let's head up and let me see. Mind Cam. So the first thing that we are going to need is a machine that is capable of actually tearing apart objects into their constituent chemicals. And that is the Chemical Decomposer, which requires an Atomic Manipulator, which is sort of ridiculously cheap, honestly. It requires power. But uh, let's see, let's get that going. So for that, we're going to need... Uh, let me see... Eight pistons. We'll probably need more, because there's things like the, the blueprint projector, the synthesis machine, which you use for combining chemicals into new products, um, and the microscope, which will help you keep a track of what comes from where. And apparently, mine has its own uranium. Hmm. Didn't know that. Okay, and of course, since it is Halloween, I am feeling I am filming this on Halloween. Um, there's a bunch of pumpkin buckets everywhere. <laughs> ha. Uh, now, before I forget, there is an item from Zeno's that I really want to pick up. Now, don't tell Dave that I'm getting this one, uh, because it is kind of really, really bad for his kind of operation. So, it takes rows and four never cubes and four glowing water, which is just uh, condensed splash potion of glowstone dust, which is gunpowder, never warm glowstone, and a vial of ordinary water, which you can just make from glass panes and fill with water and transpose it. So, I've already set that up. So, we need. Four glowing water. This shouldn't take long to craft. And one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. Now, do we have a rose? I'll be amazed if we. Apparently, we don't. Wow. Okay. Um. Let me grab the never cubes either way, because I know where we can manage to find some rose. Whoop. Wings to me. Okay. So I'm sure there are some roses. Are they over here? Yeah, there's one. Just from the top. Perfect. Uh, now, unfortunately, there isn't actually any meaningful way that I know of, at least, to mass ma mass produce roses. Right, let's just take a look. Uh, I can tra force transmute it, but that is the extent of it. And of course, can't make that. I can make the dyes. Ooh, I can chemical synthesize it from shikimic acid. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why there's not a rose equivalent there. Very odd. Uh, but basically, the Witherless Rose does exactly what it says on the tin. As long as it's in my inventory, I cannot get the Wither effect. Uh, which, you know, I don't expect to come up too often, because the only things that give it are the Wither and Wither Skeletons, but all of which do not care in the least about us. Uh, but... If you were to combine very strong withering with very strong poison, you might have a chance of killing me. Not anymore. Uh, so anyways, here's our chemical decomposer. And we do get the empty vials back, so that's helpful. Right. So let's grab uh, the DNA breeder off. Do stick that there. And oh, did I just... Did I, just I swear I was just given something. But I don't know what. I swear something flew at me. 
Did nobody... Did, did, hmm, okay, that was weird. Anyways. Is this behind me? Nope, okay. Just no idea. Uh, so we stick the items in here, and we get stuff out. So the particular thing that we're interested in, in today is... Let me see. We need coal for some carbon. We also need potatoes, of which we are gathering a <laughs> more than healthy stock. Wow. Um, and let's see what we can get out of feathers as well. Now, people who have played with mine game can probably guess what it is I'm working towards here. So, coal gets us eight carbon, uh, which polytool is something that you can... It's sort of like an... It's, it's like... Yeah. Any tool you can put together, you can use for you can use the police the poly tool for, but you can also tweak with various chemicals how it works. Uh, okay, let's try the feather. Gets us six nitrogen and eight water. Uh, and let's see, potato. Oh, gets us a cellulose, two potassium, and eight more water. Now, just because I have no reason to, now nah, we'll leave it. Um, anyways, so potassium carbon and nitrogen let's go make our second machine and that will be the synthesizer Oop. so let's take a look the synthesizer requires another atomic manipulator which is just pistons and an iron block iron redstone and a diamond so let's see I block of iron which is easy because I've got I've set the system up now to maintain having a thousand a thousand iron, and it is a speedy little crafter. So, all done. Okay, atomic core, and we need more iron as well as a bit of redstone. Fairly straightforward. I might tell the system how to make the atomic cores, but there aren't really all that many uh, materials. Like there aren't that many like things to craft. Like, it's, it's it's mostly, like, stuff that you craft out of that. So there isn't too much need of having it there, but, you know. Uh, one other thing from Xenos that might come up... Uh, let me just grab that. Um, if I look it up, it is one of the condensed uh, potions you can make. And it's specifically called the Grand Panacea. So that's a bucket of milk and eight elixirs of healing and regen. And that makes 8 Grand Panacea, 30 second regen, heal 6 hearts, that is in addition, but it's not a measure of how much uh, health you will regain from the 30 seconds of regen. It's heal 6 immediately, and then and then you have 30 seconds of regen afterwards, and cures any ailment, it, uses, it takes the milk bucket effect. That is probably going to come in handy in a moment, uh, once you see exactly what I have planned here. So there's our chemical synthesis machine, and... We need to tell it all of the things that we want to use. So, let me see. Carbon. Nitrogen. Potassium. No. Nope. I have to tell it one of each. Maybe. And that. Okay. That. Potassium cyanide. Now, cyanide is an extremely dangerous thing for humans, um, because it will basically destroy every part of you. Okay, you've got power, you are currently charging, or you're using power, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, you're not, you don't seem to be making anything. Okay, there we go. So there's potassium cyanide. Now, the reason I'm making potassium cyanide is because certain things in mine chem can be applied to food and items. So my flux infused sword, which for the record already does 12 damage, not counting critical hits, now also gives a two minute wither effect. Now moreover, you can actually stack that. So if I made another if I made another potassium cyanide, I could coat it again. This isn't a temporary thing, it's basically an enchantment. You can see the effect going on there. So that would basically kill anything I hit. In fact, if I was to hit a Horned Huntsman with that, one hit will pretty much halve the Huntsman's health eventually, because the Wither effect works faster than the Huntsman's own health regen. Uh, okay, Necromancer robes. In goes the Witch's hat. 
Now this, I, I think this is checking how many enchantments it already has and using that as a marker for how much work it has to do. Uh, but anyways, let us head up here and move on to our next job of the day. So, automate moss. Now, the two things that we need to automate with regards to making puppets are the mandrake, because that is used in making mutandas, which is used in making uh, certain parts of the death protection puppets and like, and, well, namely the drop of luck, and Spanish moss, which is a vital ingredient along with cotton, uh, for making string and wool, uh, for making the puppets. Now, we currently have a grand total of 124. We have 50 puppets in backlog, so that's something helpful. But we don't have an automated puppet farm. Uh, we don't have an automated Spanish moss farm. Now, the best way that I can think of is to put our division sigils to work. Uh, because if we get a bit of the unstable ingots... So let me see if I just search unstable. Uh, there we go. And we get two of these, we can make the precision shears, which never break. That is a crucial thing, because otherwise this farm doesn't run forever. Uh, and a couple of angel blocks, which are fairly cheap little things. So, let me see, let's see that again. Angel blocks. Boop, all the materials, no worries. So the angel block is a block from extra utilities that you can place anywhere. So, for example, I have... I'm out of range of everything. Goes right there. And I can punch it to break it, and it goes immediately back into my inventory teleports. Very handy if you're trying to build in the sky, because you don't need to nerd pill. Um, but that's not what we're after. So, let's see. I need iron. Uh, two iron. And I'm going to need myself a normal crafting table, because you cannot craft these otherwise. Must be crafted in a vanilla crafting table. And there is a time limit for these, so this will be fun, I'm sure. Now, point of note, people have been trying to speculate exactly how to kill me. Um, this will do the trick, believe it or not. This is entirely capable of legitimately actually killing me. Um, I don't exactly know why, it just is. So, let's do it next to this uh, desert nova, because that seems like an appropriate place. So, I need to craft the two unstable ingots, and then I need to combine them very quickly to create uh, our precision shears, which will stabilize them. So, let's grab them, let's get moving, and precision shears. There. No worries. Surprisingly, that didn't take me four or five times of everybody dying to get. Weird. So, it's my understanding that these should work okay, but let's try them just in case. Yes. Good. And... Ooh, there is there is a durability, but it's very, very high. So that should get us a fair bit. Actually, I just got two and it used up two. Hang on. Can I... Is there a right click? No. Shift right click. Whoa. What? Uh, okay, it's... That's weird. Okay, apparently I can grab things instantaneously. So, oh, that is some nice rendering. Look at that. The actual blades are translucent. Ah, that's neat. Okay, so I'll have to find out some per some permanent means, but uh, of actually like having shears that don't break. But now we need an autonomous activator, and we'll just go. We're just going to point that at somewhere that Spanish moss will grow. Fire pit or something. Huh. Okay, uh, we should have, or should be capable of making all of those, like a servo with a piston. And a piston, please. And I can hear you shut up. I'm sick of you, come away. Anyways, back to task. So, get that, get a little bit of Spanish moss. Why did I just type piston? I don't know. There. Head down to our farming level. So, down here we just stick Spanish moss about there. That will gradually glow, grow downwards. Uh, I don't actually have anything on me to make this. Let's grab some stone quickly. Benefits of a silk touch pick. Right. Okay, so we face that 
Where are you? Doop doop. That the no, that's not the right way. Come on, right way. Thank you. Okay, face it that way. And we give it the precision shears. We want it to left click, not sneaking, aim level, and powered, not really a huge issue. So if I plunk that there, it will gradually it will gradually farm it. That is going to degrade the shears over time, which is a pain. I would have expected unstable ingots for their cost of getting to be like immortal effectively, but apparently we're going to have to deal. So I can just work a I can even put a uh, I can I can grab probably a vacuum hopper and just have that be grabbing all the stuff, or I can use an item collector from random things. Uh, and that, by the way, was our man trick farm going off. Haven't had a single problem with that yet. It is fantastic. And let's check out how many mandrake seeds we actually have in here. Uh, none because they're all going into the planter, of course. So that hasn't backed up yet. Uh, oh ho! But we have a fair few. Wow. Okay, so yeah, that is the start of our Spanish moss farm. Uh, One-eyed ravens. Okay, so there's a lot of people around. Uh, let me just zoom out and show you. These are all of the bases that I've managed to pinpoint. So I managed to find what I think was Blood and Chaos. I've managed to find Fire Co. I've managed to find the Dead Workers Theme Park. R.I.P. Dead Workers Body. Um... I found Bebop and Ridge Dog, which is surprisingly still intact. Uh, also found the Magic Police. A lot of people want me to go. Want me to go visit them, but I'm not really like a guy that ventures out of his. I'm. I don't. The witch rarely will rarely exit the woods for obvious reasons. Uh, I found the Young Witches. Found Strive Solutions. Shin's Farm. Chili Wawas. The Hat Twits. Uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of places. Some people are asking if we could get a more updated map. This is about as accurate as I think it can get. I haven't managed to find other Dave's place, and for the love of God, shut up. Seriously. No one is listening to you. Go away. Right, anyways, sorry. My, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I need some people to go and keep an eye on them. Now, of course, I can't just send a a boss, because, like, sending the hunt, something like a huntsman, is going to be, uh, well, obvious, for one thing, they have a big boss bar of them, they don't make fantastic spies. So, I was thinking that we would venture into the Twilight Forest, and we would find ourselves a, a forest raven. Now, once we capture one of those, we can bring it back over here, and we can... Uh, genetically augment it so it's got more health, so it can move faster, that kind of thing. Um, and then we can auto spawn it. So we can have as many one eye ravens as we like. Uh, quite why I'm calling it the one eye raven, I'm not sure. It just sort of, sort of came to me. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> right. So that's the plan for those. Now, homework. Uh, last time I set you all the task of watching the crazies. It was a dub potentially double movie kind of thing. Um, but. The Crazies is a classical film in its original installment. The second one does definitely take a lot more of the idea of them being effectively zombie-like in the, la in the like, latter half of the movie. It's not fantastic, um, and it, it does abuse... It, it, it's definitely modern. I guess I can say that. It's definitely a modern-day kind, of, uh, kind of thing. But... Yeah, I, did, I don't know. Why aren't... Oh, because I turned this off, of course. That's why these went harvesting, huh. Um, like, it, it's definitely sort of a modern horror film, and it shows a lot of the flaws in that regard. Uh, whereas the original, by George Romero, has his typical trademark filming style, that has to be said. That has to be said, but... Um... It, it's a lot more subtle. Uh, it's a lot more, we don't know what's going on. It's a lot more, the powers that are managing this barely know what's going on, that kind of thing. It's very much anti-government, it's very much uh, anti-paranoia, like paranoia. it's very much the people are the problem more than the situation, that kind of thing. Um, I, I really like the original, uh, but it, its graphics do suffer th with its age, so that's... Mm, yeah. Uh, but anyways, our new... our, our additional... Uh, <laughs> our new homework project uh, is going to be the 
Well, I thought I'd give you something fun, because it is Halloween. So, this is Night of the Living Dead. Now, there are two or three versions of this. So, there's George A. Romero's original. There is the original, like, whole, like, town of Pittsburgh coming together to film it, uh, with Romero and his, uh, and his other, like, um, assistants and such. Um, this is pre-Savini. That's important to know. Savini was drafted into, uh, in, into the Vietnam War, li literally as Night of the Living Dead was filming. That's why he doesn't appear in the original. Um, but this is black and white, and not fantastic in its portrayal of women, I have to say. Uh, obviously, Barbara becomes basically comatose. Um, and then there is the 1990, which is a particularly special year for me, um, Tom Savini remake. Now, this one was in color. This one had a much more positive portrayal of uh, Barbara, uh, which is, you know, kind of a good thing, because Barbara is, like, the, pers per the first person that we get introduced to in the film and all sorts. And then I... I think there might have been a more recent remake. Uh, Romero has started to like re reboot his his like Night of the Living Dead franchise a little bit a bit. Um, so, anyways, you can check out the 1990 version by Tom Savini, which has of course much better much better special effects because Savini is a legend in sort of that kind of thing. Um, or you can check out uh, the original, or you can check out both. They're not very long movies. I definitely advise you find some form of watching them with, spe with like uh, special features because they're awesome. And there, there is a sensation on the back of my neck. That's it.